this joint. 10 seconds to never. This concept I came up with maybe 20 years ago. Typically, when you make a decision either to do something or to not do something, happens in about 10 seconds, either way. You may, and this is on the subconscious level, you may tell yourself consciously that you are making that decision, you are committed to that decision, and you're gonna go forward with it, such as losing weight, working out, uh, New Year's resolutions, things like that. You know, you're just like, we are gonna do this. But it never happens. You start and it peters out. In the rim of starting a business, I know many, many people have made the decision, but in that 10 seconds to never, they never committed to the decision. I want you to really, I want to parse this for you. Making a decision, committing to a decision, those nuances are super important. They are extremely important. When you commit, that is when you get the results. As long as you give yourself wiggle room, you won't get any results. You will have that nagging feeling, this deepest sound that's like, I'm just... I'm really not doing what I need to do. I'm not really putting out like I should put out. And it creates a problem for you. Because every time you make a decision to do something and you don't do it, you create some negative residue inside of yourself. Seriously negative residue. So, going forward, I want you to think about your decisions like this. You sit down, you make a decision. Now ask yourself, am I committed to this decision? Because, you know, really ask yourself, it's, it's just you and maybe uh, Smokey the dog hanging out. Just go, am I really committed to this decision? Am I really committed to going forward with this thing that I want to do because give you an example it's you group of people you're hanging out and they're like hey let's go to such and such bar let's go to wet willies or something like that and the decision is made the decision is made but someone else comes to the group hey let's go to Betsy Ballers because they've got some big balls over there at Betsy Ballers. And they're like, okay. Then another decision is made to go to Betsy's Ballers. Now, what just happened? Decisions are made, but there's no commitment. That happens all the time with groups. It's like, well, we're going to do this. We're going to do this. But the decisions are made, and it sounds good, but without a firm commitment, without firm resolve, that decision is 10 seconds to never. 10 seconds, that's all it takes for it to never actually matriculate into the real world. It's totally gone. You euthanized that decision by not making a commitment. That's what happened. And many people don't understand what's going on with this process because I was clueless myself for many years. I would go ahead and start stuff but I was never committed, never really committed to winning. And when I became committed to winning, even my marginal decisions had more oomph and impact. Much more, way more. If you want to be that person you think you are deep, deep inside of yourself, you have to ask yourself some questions. What things am I willing to commit to, to? What things make my heart go pitter patter? What really gives me energy 
and a lot of energy to move forward in life, to make a go of certain things, to really be successful. And I'll tell you a story. There's this thing I used to do called Passionate Friday. I was committed to it for about 18 months, committed. The beginning was very rocky. It was very rocky. It was rough. I pissed off people. I hit people on the wrong list, sir. I had all kinds of stuff. But I was committed to Passionate Friday. I just liked the whole premise. And just to give you a little feedback, well, give you a little background. The premise was Friday night, 12 a.m., there would be a new erotic or love poem or a love letter or something like that. Because I was committed, even if it was 11.30 Thursday, 11.30 p.m. Thursday, I got that piece out because I was committed to the project. And that's the thing with a commitment. If you're not committed to success, success will not be committed to you. Success would be like, <laughs> I'm out, deuces. I mean, seriously. And I, I see a lot of that because, understand, understand you might be in a bad situation right now. You might be hurting financially. You may not be where you want to be in life. You may be living with your parents. You may be living in a bad part of town. And you have to ask yourself, are you committed to getting out of that shit? Because if you're not committed, you're not getting out of that shit. It's, it's not going to happen. And commitment is an odd handmaiden. Commitment will make you do things that you can never, ever do. Commitment will bring you to a higher place in life. Commitment will give you clarity on things that you were unclear on. Because when you tell yourself, I'm going to do this, in that sexy, I'm going to do this voice, and you mean it, and you're committed, you get excited inside. You wake up things in you that were dead. So, understand, when you're doing decisions for your business, your life, you must be committed to the decision. The decision is easy to make. It is exhibited by which bar we're going to, this one, this one, this one. Because decisions are made, but they're not firm decisions with a commitment. Many people run their lives the same way people sit at one bar and decide which other bar they're going to go to. It's just like helter, skelter. Well, you know, that's going to work out. Well, we want to do that one. Now, another way for you to become committed to your decisions is to make better decisions. This is a lesson in efficiency and economy. Just because you can make a decision doesn't mean you need to make it. It's like you got $400,000 in the bank, right? You have a Ferrari in the garage. You see another Ferrari. That Ferrari is 400000 You got the money in the bank. You already have a Ferrari. You like the Ferrari. You have the capacity to buy the Ferrari. But does it make sense? Because if you know anything about Ferrari owners, they don't drive those suckers that often. So you would have not one expensive sheet of metal in your garage. You would have two. So just because you have the capacity, the ability, doesn't mean that you have to do it. Which means crank down your decisions. Instead of using your decision-making karma, energy, whatever you want to call it, mojo, hojo, whatever, start thinking of your decisions from a quality standpoint. Don't say, I'm going to start hustling to make some money. That is not a quality decision. A quality decision is, I'm going to start hustling to gain capital to 
to invest in something else or to save or to pay off debt to the tune of, I'm going to hustle to the tune of $2,000 a month. I'm going to go out and hustle $2,000 a month to pay off X bill or to contribute to Roth RA or to contribute to my SEP. That's a quality decision. You got to bring your decisions making up to more quality. And that's something else that, you know, sometimes I struggle with it because I have this list of books I want to write. And then I go back, does that book need to be written by me? And I have to think about that. Does, do I really need to write that book? And it made me crank down the list because I don't know if you ever in the book, but that's a lot of typing. And it's a lot of time. It's a lot of energy. And writing is fun for me. But I have to be more on the quality tip now than the volume tip. Because if you write the right book, it becomes timeless. You know, doing, you know, I'll tell you right now, don't buy my Craigslist book because Craigslist has made changes that the books may be 40% effective now. Certain things you just can't do anymore. That's just being real. When I wrote the book, it was extremely effective. People made a little money. But now, some of that stuff just doesn't work anymore. That's part of change. I want to get to the point where I'm giving you really good, long-term, applicable, you know, lifelong applicable information. That, that's where I'm raising my bar to. That's what I want to do for you. That's what I want to give you. Which means my decisions have to have more quality because... I do become committed to things very easily. I train myself to commit to certain things because the way that I work, the way that my mind operates is I need that target. I need metrics. I need quantitative analysis. I need this stuff to make my mojo work. So my commitment process can be totally different from yours. But this is what I do. I sit down and the first thing I do after I make the decision and commit to the decision is I come up with a timetable. Second, that's, 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 that's critical. That is critical. The timetable, you have to have it. So I come up with a timetable and I start coming up with benchmarks. Because I'm learning to enjoy the process more than the end results. And when you're enjoying the process, that's the longest part. You, get, you gain more enjoyment. And when you become process-oriented, like Nick Saban, University of Alabama, Roll Tide, you have better results. So I'm becoming a process monkey. What's my process? And I'm having to re-examine, to change up my processes, to do something different, to do, um, to make things better for my abilities to give you good content, to give you good YouTube, to give you good Facebook. Because as I go through this thing called my life, I want to look back and smile more than I frown. Early on, because I will commit to something, made a lot of bad decisions, got committed to a lot of bad decisions, and I learned a lot from those bad decisions. I wouldn't do them over again, but going forward, I know the value of a quality decision, of being committed to that. So, understand, if you want to learn how to commit to your decisions so you're not saying 10 seconds to never over and over and over go back and look at your life many people want to solve internal problems with external solutions such as more money a bigger house a nicer wardrobe a little bling bling and it's not going to ease the ache of your soul. You have to start there first. You, you really, really have to start there first. So with that, 
you have to go into introspection mode. And the best way for you to do this is to journal about your life, your desires for 30 days. Pull, <coughs> pull that stuff out. Pull that stuff out of wherever it is in you and look at it. Really, really look at it because you start making decisions before you really start going, what makes my soul sing these big songs? You're going to have problems. You're going to be doing a lot of work for things that are not going to give you inner satisfaction. When you get inner satisfaction, you sleep better at night, you have better relationships, and you, you draw people to you. You draw incredible people to you because you become an incredible person. And that's the, the uh, bounty of gaining inner satisfaction. And for most people, it's not money. But since I'm a staunch capitalist, money's a part of my thing because money affords me freedom. But you gotta really figure out that thing. What is your thing? What, what makes you really, really want to get up in the morning? What really moves you? What makes you go, hmm, that's the shit. That's it. I remember one time I was at a spoken word event. I did my piece and it was booty. They were like, you know that soft clap you get when your shit doesn't go well? Then this guy comes on that looks like Point Dexter. Then he does this intellectual piece, but you don't expect that to come out of him. And when he was done, everyone in the room was moved. That guy has inner satisfaction because for you to write stuff like that, you gotta go deep. You know, there's, there's this thing about writers, you know, you make your shit up. When you are not afraid to go deep inside of you, the things that you can come up with are incredible. Being not afraid is, well, if I write this, people are going to think poorly of me. I've heard a lot of people talk about hustlers universe. Hustler has such a negative connotation. Well, not the way that I do it. You you got to you got to really get away from that fear thing because as my grandmother said, some people going to like you, baby. Some people are not going to like you. And it doesn't matter what you do. And it's very, very true. So if you walk, if you're leading a life to please other people based on false God, inner guidance, no wonder you're disappointed. Because if you entrust your happiness to others, don't be surprised if they misuse it. So, think, you know, take a few moments. Really, really think about what you can do to find your inner soul fulfillment then go back to making decisions because once you get that that compass together making better decisions becomes easy er easy er you remember the bug wiser frogs bug wiser er okay bad joke but you're with me right so take a little time get the journal out and what does this have to do with hustling and what does this have to do with money? Well, when you solve those issues, when you get to a certain point in your life and fulfill that thing that makes your soul sing big songs, you will get to a place in life where getting money becomes friction free becomes friction free you're not really selling you're more presenting and saying hey this is what I have to offer it's a different ball game and with that as I go in the dark <laughs> with that I will see you on the good side and if you want to change your life links below go ahead and get that hook up to hustling university it's gonna make a better man woman dog or parrot or even seal out of you trust me it will all right, this is Glenda.